Glasses, coatings, polymers. More and more products contain nanoparticles. At less than 100 nanometers, whether gold, silver, or zinc, they are generating great interest in many industrial sectors. Present at the Erhema Trade Fair, German particle specialist Sifvetek reckons nanomaterials make many promising applications. Just imagine you have improvements in mechanical strength, you have improvements in electronics and optical properties, and chemical properties. Let's say one example, you, w you have a special paint and you want to make this paint uh, wet or dirt resistant. So you add some nanoparticles inside and it's resistant against dirt, very well washable. Or um, you need very fine polishing materials for glass. All these glasses, touchable glasses made for mobile phones, need a very flat surface and you can polish them with nanomaterials. And all these improves the uh, material. There's a lot of new possibilities with nanotechnology. Nanomaterials are closer in size to molecules. The smaller the material, the more important its surface area becomes in enhancing its physical properties. Nanoparticles in the industry are coming more and more um, attention because they have unique properties in, in comparison to their bike material. Um, due to the small sizes of these nanoparticles, the surface area is really huge. So we can use it as catalytic chemistry or in optical chemistry or in general uh, in medical applications for sensor and diagnostic products. The German Institute came up with a class of semiconductor materials, quantum dots made of colloidal nanocrystals. These particles produce strong fluorescence with a size-dependent emission wavelength. They can be used in display technology. One example of these nanoparticles are quantum dots. Because of their size, you have different fluorescent colors. They are semiconductors, so you can define the band gap between uh, valent band and uh, the conducting band by their size, just by the size. You have the same material and they can fluoresce in different colors. Uh, application of these nanoparticles can be used in, the, uh, in displays to produce the color of the display. And by their size you can have um, really small bandwidths of the fluorescent light and so you can make really brilliant colors. Despite this promising aspect, materials chemists have to deal with an essential challenge. One disadvantage of these nanoparticles are up to now the synthesis of these nanoparticles. Because you often had one batch from several liters of gold particles and you want a desired size. And if you don't get this desired size, you have to discard everything. And you don't know it from the beginning when you do the synthesis. And so we have uh, developed a continuous um, reactor for this to produce these nanoparticles in a continuous and reproducible way. Um, and because of that, we can um, overcome these problems of the synthesis and they will get more and more in the application side. Taking advantage of all the properties of nanoparticles also requires knowing their exact size and composition. Sympathetic designed an instrument that characterizes ultra-small particles. We light the nanos, I would even say we bring a clear view in turbid suspensions. So there's a special technology inside which is called photon cross-correlation spectroscopy. And generally you use one laser to illuminate the particles and you detect the Brownian motion, so the thermal movement of these particles, by the scattering light of the particles with the detector. But uh, if you increase the concentration, as you see here, this is a very turbid sample, you may get some problems of multiple scattering effects. So other particles re-scatter the scattering light uh, from the center of the measuring zone. And to prevent this, we um, built or established an instrument with a two laser beam setup and two detectors to get two independent scattering beams. And with this cross 3D cross correlation technology, um, we can eliminate the multiple scattering. So we bring actually a clear view inside turbid liquids. So are nanomaterials becoming standard industrial products? I think we are somewhere on the borderline. There is already something 
already very improved and established in our market, but there are more and more material coming and maybe it will replace even the micro particles in size. We see also many industries, they start with the micro particles and they are getting finer and finer. They see there are new properties, there are new, uh, uh, yeah, new properties to where, where you can change the product. It changed the product itself.